guys, it's Rene Day here, and I'm here with the, another video, and as you can tell, this is my annual Reading video. So, you know, Reading was probably a few weeks ago by the time I'm posting this, or maybe a week ago if I'm, if I get this out soon enough and get it edited. edited. Um, but got a lot of footage this time. I, uh, some of it's dubbed over with music, but a lot of it is not dubbed over with music. I'm go um, the Marines did a battle, that's the only battle that I got on footage. Uh, I was out doing other things during the other battles, and but the one battle that I did catch is with the one where they were using the flamethrowers. So I kept that, and in this video, as you can see, it's cropped a lot for time management. But I am going to just post an uncut version of that battle in another video. It'll be coming out right after this one. But got a lot of footage, met a lot of uh, viewers at uh, Reading, and so I would just go. I'll play the uh, footage, and then I'll go over, tell, say some more stuff about it after it, and then go over the stuff that I got. So, without farther farther ado, let us go on to the uh, footage. <laughs>
so this is my field radio setup for the company B, YD. Uh, this is the switchboard that we purchased to use to run field telephones to the camp. Here's my other radio. And this is a handy talkie, which would be used by the uh, guys in the field if they didn't have the backpack radio to communicate between the platoon and headquarters level. Uh, for the field phones, we kind of jerry-rigged it to like work, but so basically this is one tent, another tent, another tent, master phone, which is this one. And then this one leads to another camp, right? Yes. This one's another camp. At least at a camp next to us. So basically, if we wanted to make a call to, let's say, another tent in our group, we take the master, hook it up to their line, and then ring this phone. And it rings their phone. And when you pick it up, they answer. And you can just hear, yeah, you can just hear them through the phone. Now also, you, you, if you mind, I can just show it real quick. When, uh, when a call comes in through here, you can uh, crank the phone real quick. This little light will come on and it'll start buzzing as you can hear. Yeah. You'll see the little yellow or whatever color that is turn on and then this will start buzzing, making noise that a call is coming in from that line. So then you take your master, which is this, this is the master anyways, but for demonstration, you stick it in there and pick up the phone and talk. And if you want to transfer someone, you take out the master, take whoever's calling, and then put it in their line, and they'll ring it, and then they'll talk to them. Yeah, so now this can, to talk, can talk to this tent through the switchboard. Yes. Yeah. So, so if it I does, yeah, it does have a silent mode too. Yes. This level. So if I left it in like this, this person would be able to call this person, but they won't be able to call me directly. Yeah. Unless I unplug it like this, and then I get the call. Yep. And as you can see, these are spring-loaded, kind of, you know. Spring-loaded. Go right back in. Yeah. And, uh, is a post-war switchboard, but, you know, it looks the part. Yes, it so looks more rugged good. than the uh, World War II version, because... More durable, too. Yeah. <laughs> the World War II ones, if you breathe on them wrong, they won't work. Yeah. These ones, if you drop them, they'll work. Exactly. And, and you can, as you can tell, money. they pr yeah, they Hey, huh. this is why we come to Reading. This was yeah. fifty bucks. Exactly, fifty bucks for the for the unit radio switchboard. I mean, but it works. But yeah, it only so, took a day to figure cool. it out. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason this one turns on when we ring it is because you know we had to jerry rig it because this generator isn't working yet. Yeah. So we used the generator from an E8 to ring the other phone. So that's why it buzzes here, but it's just your phone coming through here. So you just turn yes. it off. So this would be the master, which. This would technically be the master, but since we have to figure out how it works correctly, the master is this phone up here, connected to this line. And you can see the lines all going out too. I'll show you the lines all spreading around in a minute. And it's a very cool But that's display. how we have it set up this year for Reading. Hopefully it will bring it, make it better next year, but yeah. Yeah, sure hope so, man. Are you going to D-Day? Yes, I am. Yeah, and hopefully we can set this up and rig up a few camps. Hopefully, yeah. And maybe a German camp. Maybe. <laughs> We're a little far, but we'll see about that one. It would be fun. It would be fun. Yeah, we can ice it. Add a YouTube brick. Huh? YouTube. Hi. Steve McGrath. I'm tired and I'm sorry. I'm awake and I'm
Right shoulder, arms. Left shoulder, arms. Order, arms. Right shoulder, arms. About, face. Forward, march. <laughs> About, face. Order arms. At ease. Are you just recording me tying my shoe now? No. You are. a gallon fuel that has probably cost the better part of a thousand dollars for each aircraft and we did it here for you today
Here we go, everybody. So as you can see, the, there was a good amount of footage, a lot of uh, riding and things, and which was fun. Uh, a couple stories that I gotta say throughout the uh, footage is, you can see I was riding in that one uh, vehicle with the Modus 50 caliber machine gun mounted on it, and what that was, it was a M20 Greyhound. So it's a vehicle got it's a vehicle that got three wheels. I don't know really how to th uh, three wheels on each side. I don't really know how to explain it too well, but you know, I'll post a picture of it in the video, the M20 Greyhound. One heck of a thing to ride, and it was fun. Uh, the reenactor parking was probably like, I don't know, I gotta say like a mile away. And, but um, it was really fun to ride in. And we actually, they they, they were over there. And we uh, we asked, hey, you wanna save, save Uncle Sam a couple pairs of boots? And you know, they were like, sure, hop on. So, you know, we were like, heck yeah. and. And we hopped on, and they went right past the gate, and we were like, oh, are you going in the back way? They're like, no, we're just going for a ride. So, there was that. And, um, as you can see, I did some, I tried to do some drill with the Modus 50 caliber machine gun. Did pretty good, in my opinion. And, didn't say it was supposed to rain today, but it is. And it's coming down hard. I gotta get stuff inside. We will continue this maybe inside, and maybe when the rain stops. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, we got everything moved inside before it got too wet. Um, you can never say I don't try and film outside. <laughs> so, we're back in this room. Less space. Uh, I switched the light bulb, so hopefully the lighting isn't orange. But, um, also, big help is I'm filming it during the daytime and not at 10 o'clock at night. So, um, I guess let's just start going over the stuff I got. So to start off, we got the I got another ammo ca uh, can. You can see this is the actual standard issue type uh, kind, and not the uh, modified kind that I have, modified for a machine gun. This is a just the standard issue kind. It's still kind of seized up. I got to kind of put some oil on it. As you can see, it's very nice. It has good paint on it right now. Here, I'll just clean this up. There we go. Got good paint on it, as you can see. Not too much rust. Actually has a better paint. Actually has better paint than my uh, other ammo can. And uh, just looks really cool. I really like the latch on it. That's why I needed one. So, ammo can. Don't think they were dated. But, um... Very cool. Next, what I got is a couple pistol belts. I got a World War II pistol belt, which is kind of wet now, but you know, a World War II pistol belt, as you can see, has this weird ring kind of put onto it. I don't know why I'll probably cut that off unless y'all tell me it's something important, then I'll leave it on. Um, we got the, it's uh, aluminum, aluminum hardware, so it's uh, early war. Can't really make out the date on it too well, but uh, it is a very nice pistol belt, and I needed I needed one because my my other World War II pistol belt is a bit crispy, and the actual holes disintegrate when they're used. So I don't want to use that one, so I use so I had to get this one. And this uh, World War One pistol belt. That I got for free, as you can tell, probably why all of the eyelets are ripped out. So it's a shame, but what are you gonna do? It's a it's a free pistol belt. Figure out something to do with this. Why well, actually put everything out front? Not like you can even see it. But um, we got a German belt buckle, my captured German belt buckle, and belt, as you can see, uh, it's a very nice reproduction, 
uh, very good leather, very good buckle, um, and I just, uh, so Brick has like a couple uniforms, a couple German uniforms, so if I, we ever want to do something with like German for a video, I wanted a belt so I could be able to uh, do that. And I could probably reuse this belt for World War One if I decide to do World War One. But, uh, very nice belt, like I said, it fits, I have it adjusted to me already, so it's a very nice German belt. And, you know, when I'm not wearing it, it's my captured German belt. Nice war trophy. Next I got this uh, uh, German cap, I'm not too sure of the designation yet, because, you know, I just got it. It is, it is a reproduction, and the reproduction is dated 1916, so that's why it's not all red. But they did 1916, which is what I would want to do my World War One German impression with. So I could still have the early war red piped uniform and wear the M16 Stahlhelm. I know the Ball 1915 uniform would be coming about by then, but I really like the early war uniform, and that would be the best time that I'd be able to use everything that I want. And I'm pretty sure my great grandfather came in early war, so I'd like to do an early war too, because we stories that he witnessed the Christmas truce. That's something cool. Next, I got my friend uh, restored this. He was selling, selling it for 65 bucks. It is a uh, World War II front seam swivel bell uh, Schluster helmet. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's the uh, rarer manufacturer, the one that's it's actually worth a bit more for some reason. Uh, they're a little bit different than the McCord helmets. Uh, it looks a bit shorter, I want to say. And the shape is a little bit different, but how you can tell is you, you go to the uh, heat stamp in it, and there's a little S under it, which means the Schluster, I hope. I'm pronouncing that right. But the very nice uh, restored helmet, front seam, swivel bail, like I said, and overall for a really good price. Set that down. Next, I got this uh, khaki enlisted uh, service cap that does fit me. So, we just. does fit me very well. In fact, there's a string I gotta cut off. Um, so, you can use this with my khaki uniform. It will look very good. And it's just very nice to use. I did. it looks like an early war hat, but it. There's a tag on it dating it to 1946, it's a post war, but um, what I think might might be, it might be the tag for the actual cover, and the cover was replaced. But the actual inside the hat is early war. That could be what happened, it could just be a post, uh, po just post war or very late war hat. Either way, it's a very nice hat, and I can use it for World War II. And as you can see, it is well broken in. You can see, well broken in. Set that down. Next, I'm pretty sure this is British made. I'm all 1928 Haversack uh, uh, Mesquite cover. You can see it's a OD kind of color, which is iconic to uh, British made uh, American heart, uh, field gear. I cannot find any markings in this anywhere, but it is a very nice. Very good condition, uh, well, 1928 Mesquite uh, cover thing. Mesquite pouch. There we go. Next, we got an original World War One gas mask bag. I have my Repro gas mask in this right now. As you can see, Repro gas mask is in there. I don't want to really get an original gas mask because I wouldn't have much use for it. And uh, let's see what. I heard that if uh, you pick up a gas mask, a World War One gas mask, and your ha and your hands like tingle after it, that you reactivated a little bit of mustard gas that w it was exposed to, uh, so you don't really want to handle it too much. And I did find an original gas mask, and when I picked it up, my hands did indeed tingle, and they tingled a lot. So I was like, I don't think I'm gonna get that. <laughs> so. I didn't get that one. Found a really good bag because the What Price Glory one, uh, it's a What Price Glory one is a good bag. I just, there's one flaw with it. This uh, hook right here, and this uh, if I remember what side it's on, 
I'll, I'll do a video on this, just kind of explaining the, diff the mild difference. The bag, the what, like I said, the well-priced glitter bag is really good, except for this. Uh, they're not wire hooks. They're just like a hook, and uh, they don't snap into place. They uh, they just kind of like in there. They're hooked together, and if you bend a weird way, then it'll come unhooked, and your gas mask will fall down to the side. But this, with its latched on, you can move around. You can bounce. Uh, you can bend and do all that. Well, not bend like that, but. This can bend, and it will stay hooked on very good. So, and plus, uh, it was 60 bucks, so good price for an original. I put the uh, cord on it, I put my uh, repro gas mask in it. Everything else about this is original, and it's a very nice condition. As you can tell, it's used. That is very nice. And also something else with the bag, my hands don't tingle, so it's probably not exposed to any mustard gas. Next what I got, my, uh, uh, somebody on the Discord gave it to me, so shout out to Doughboy on the Discord. He gave me this, it is a, as you can tell, it is a Patterson device case. Right there, you can see the, well, Patterson device magazine case. You can see, uh, fits all the magazine in there, it fits one, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like six or, um, one, two, three, four, five, okay, only five, but it fits five. Uh, magazines in here, and as you can tell, it's very good condition. It is dated 1919, which is fine, whatever you know, whatever. Um, it's still a very cool piece. It is like in mint condition on the inside. Folds over, lift it out, it's great. Um, now if only I had a Mark 103 and a Patterson vice, but you know, those go for <laughs> a lot of money. That's pretty much the price of a car. So, we got Patterson device case in very good condition, and again, I got this for, for free, so shout out to uh, Doughboy, and he's the one in the uh, YouTube video who said, I'm famous, hi mom, in that one section that I had to uh, make it sure it was on there for him. <laughs> Next, I got a World War I grenade vest, as you can tell, I just got all the cords put into one pouch, so they're not dangling everywhere. It is an original, dated uh, May 1918, it is in very good condition, pretty much unissued, it was unissued condition. Uh, these are very common and very cheap, so it was 20 bucks for this, and the uh, reason, it, and after I bought it, the guy was like, yeah, my buddy was uh, digging around in a basement one time and he found a crate of 10,000 of these unissued, so they're very common in unissued condition, and uh, so <laughs> so I decided to get one because cheap enough was good. Uh, very nice. Uh, you will see these in my video. I feel like this uh, vest was good for my World War One impression. I don't know if I told y'all, but I decided on my World War One impression. I'm doing a uh, the my exact division in World War Two, 26th Infantry Infantry Division, 104th Regiment. So, I already refinished my helmet, which you'll see in the next World War One video, and I put a little, the 104th uh, Division torch on it, which is actually on the pin on my hat. So, paint, I hand painted on there. It looks really good, in my opinion, and it looks field done, so that's how they were often done. So, in my division, we're kind of like the stormtroopers of the U.S. Army, I heard. Uh, we have like the same rep we had the same reputation as the Marines and like wherever they needed something to be done they would send us and we would get it done so that's what I that's what my division was telling uh, um, me about our division's history in World War one if they needed something done they would call upon the YD next I got this Vietnam helmet right here you got the Vietnam cover in it and you can tell very nice uh, and also the Vietnam liner on the inside. Again, a very nice liner. But the reason uh, this guy was selling a pile of uh, Vietnam helmets for 50 bucks each, and the reason I got one is because I found out that this is a front seam helmet. He had a couple of them. This was the only one that I saw that didn't have a stress fracture in it. So it is an original World War II shell that I plan to restore back to World War II condition. Uh, so, I haven't, I don't know 
the manufacturer or anything of this. And I didn't want to, and I'm going to be doing a video about restoring this helmet. So, we will, I'm saving, and you can't see the heat stamp underneath the paint. So I'll be saving this, I'll be recording that when I uh, reveal the heat stamp, so we will discover that together. So, don't know that yet, and I will know that when I strip the paint off of it and get it all off. Now, we, now this is, is not a yellow band. This is just age. This is a white band around it. Um, but as you can tell, the paint's literally peeling off. Uh, and there's a, de a couple dents in it, but I'm going to leave those dents because it gives it character. Um, so, very nice condition. Uh, well, very nice in the shell, perhaps. There's no stress, fra stress fractures or anything like that. Even in the uh, this Schluter, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no. You might be able to see where a stress fracture could be. I, I know my McCord helmet has some repaired stress fractures in it. I can't really tell with the light. I'd need like, a flashlight and go around the brim and I could see like where the crack used to be. But it's pretty common that these helmets do have stress fractures and that some of them have been repaired. So, we're all very fun project. I've been wanting to restore an M1 helmet for a long time, and I finally got one to restore. I wish I could have bought more of those uh, helmets, but I discovered them at the end of Reading, and at the end of Reading, I was like $400 short after that. $400 more broke. I spent that a lot on a lot of uh, pieces of equipment, and uh, food wasn't the cheap. It wasn't that cheap. So let's see, I think that's it over there, behind the thing, but uh, I will actually save this for last. I got something that I am sitting on that a lot of reenactors really want. A lot of new reenactors, they hear about them, and they gotta find one. They go for about 250 bucks, and that is a Marmite cooler. Very cool, a very nice cooler. It was used in World War II. There were also circle ones that were used, but those ones have porcel porcelain internals which could shatter. These ones are durable. Uh, they're good for transportation, and you know they're a military cooler. Uh, this one's dated 1982. It was they remained the same through there through that time, and this uh they're just very wanted by the uh, reenactors because you don't need to hide it like everything. A lot of things, like a water cooler or just a regular modern cooler, you gotta hide underneath a blanket or a tent or somewhere so the public can't see it and it will be look historically accurate. This you can leave out and it will look historically accurate because it is a military cooler and it is the correct one for the time. So, you see you got four latches on it, two up here and two in the back. And as you can tell, if you know what you look for, it has the gasket, which is very hard to find. Well, not I wouldn't say very hard to find, but just that well, it's hard to find if it you if your cooler doesn't have it. If you get a cooler that doesn't have this, they're pretty difficult to find. And it is complete on the inside with all the uh, aluminum jugs. There's all three of them. It's very loud, very loud to remove. As, how this cooler could work is you could just put ice in it and uh, fill it, or you could fill these individual containers with food, all these containers with food, put them in, and you fill one of them, fill one of them with ice, and then you put it in there. Yeah. I'm going to test this out. Uh, and see how long it keeps like a water bottle cool. Which hopefully should be a couple days. Which, you know, the normal vent is a couple days long, so that's as long as you need it for. But, very cool cooler. Very happy that I got this. And, like I said, these things go for 250 bucks. And, I got this thing for 50 bucks. Complete. And it's because this guy was selling three of them for 50 bucks each. Uh, Funny story, my friend bought one for 140 and he was like, oh yeah, that's a really good price, I can't, I'm so happy that I found one. And then I, I didn't know how to make sure these things were complete. 
when I found this one. So I go up to him, I, I see three Marmots, I'm like, probably expecting like 100 bucks, 150. And he says, 50 bucks. So I'm like, all right, cool. And I kind of walk away. And as soon as I get around the tent, I start running, kind of looking for this guy and trying to find uh, somebody from my unit who knows how to identify whether these things are complete or not. Um, so I find the guy who bought um, <laughs> that one Marmite for 140. And I'm like, this dude is selling three Marmites for 50 bucks each. He's like, there's no way. And I'm like, literally, he's can you please make sure it's complete? So you, you kind of go back there, and these are still there. He looks at it, he's like, yeah, but it's complete, but there's no way that he's selling it for 50 bucks. And I just go, how much for the Marmites again? And he says 50 bucks, and he's just, he's there, you can tell, he's angry. He's just like, I spent over $100 more in months in worse, in less, in worse shape than this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I felt bad for him after that. But a very good Marmite. I'm very happy with it. It's a very good seat as well. So I'm going to test this out actually today. And once I get actually when I get more paint, I'm going to restore it. Just repaint it, really. And get it looking very good. And so I think that is all the items that I got. Oh no, actually forgetting the most important one. My favorite thing. Saved it for last. So my favorite thing I got is this. Now you might be wondering, or you might just be like, oh yeah, that's a normal M1 Garand front handguard. But as you can see, I clear coated it. And just making sure it's on camera. You can see there's a bunch of names on it. I found this handguard for 10 bucks. And I, uh, so I bought it. And I went to every World War II vet that I could find and asked them to sign it. So this is signed by about a dozen World War II vets that I saw. Um, a lot of these uh, guys have really good stories that I heard. Well, they all had really good stories that I heard. And uh, um, this guy right here, Staff Sergeant, uh, he, pe he uh, survived Pearl Harbor. So that's very cool. Uh, this guy, uh, Guy Whitten, his, his story is actually on YouTube. You can look it up. He parachuted into Normandy and Holland. He parachuted into Normandy on D-Day, and he parachuted into Holland. And he actually got kind of captured for a little bit until, uh, you know, I'll leave that. Go look at his story on YouTube. I'll put a link to the, his video in the, uh, the video that I watched in the uh, description. Very good video. Uh, very great story. And this begins the uh, search that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to find them on Grand Bits, uh, the two other pieces of stock, and I'm going to uh, have that sign. I'm going to find the actual stock bit and the top handguard. And I'm going to go to probably get the uh, stock at D-Day, or you know, before D-Day, and then go to vets there, ask them to sign it then clear coat it, and once I get all the pieces, I'll get the metal bits and just kind of glue them all together to make a, a grand stock, a complete grand stock of uh, pieces signed by World War II vets. So this is my favorite thing that I've got, that I got at the event. It was a very, it was a, a pleasure talking to them. It was, they, they really liked, you know, all the reenactors everywhere. They really liked the event and and so I got this piece, and a lot of the people in my unit are jealous that they didn't think of it, but um, a very nice piece that I got. I'm very happy with this, and I keep this thing in, like, I, I, I gotta keep this thing good forever. I gotta keep this nice and preserved, nice and all the names nice and clear on it. Gotta make sure this stays. This is, like, the most important thing that I've bought, so. So... I think that's it with all the items that I got, and if I have anything to, else to say, I'll come back later and say them, and if that's done, then you'll just see the end of the video. So I will come back in a bit. Alright, so that is it for the my Reading 2022 video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found, I hope you liked the footage that I got, I found it really fun, and it was very nice meeting all the, uh, a lot of my viewers, 
and it was very nice meeting pretty uh, all the vets. It was, it was, and the event is always a great thing to go to. Luckily, this year it wasn't 95 degrees high humidity. It was like a good 80 degrees low humidity, so I could wear the wools for most of the time until the last day when um, our commander ordered the, the uniform of the day's HVTs because we'll, we would be tearing down the camp and we needed a work uniform and the HVTs are a work uniform unless you're in the Pacific. So that was a very cool video, a very cool event. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I The uh, reason I haven't been posting too much is I've been preparing for Reading so at uh, when events are coming up well, mostly a large, large events like this, you're not going to see me posting for a little bit because I got to get everything together and I don't want to have to take everything out and record a video and then put it back in and maybe forget something. But I hope you found this video enjoyable. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed. Th uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later.